Have you ever found yourself hearing your good friends talk about a game that you've never heard of? But just by hearing about it makes you so curious you decide to look into it and eventually buy it? Well, that's what happened to me and about three other people in my chat. We all fell victim to Astral Sense Charm. With its gameplay, music, visuals, this baby's fully kitted out with everything you could ever want and need. This hack and slash style roguelike is wonderfully built in all aspects you could ever desire. And that's exactly what we're gonna be going over today. So stick around to see if Astral Set is worth your time. Welcome to the Roguelike Spotlight Viewer's Choice. Yeah! We will break down what makes Astral Ascent an astral experience. Huh, astral, you know, like space, vast and wonder. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry. But we will break it down and rate it out of five based on my experiences. Spoiler alert, I may love this game a lot. But before that, let's talk about what exactly Astral Scent is and make sure I don't spoil the rating too much. But you may be surprised with my opinions on difficulty. Let's -a go! Astral Scent is an action hack and slash roguelike where you play as one of four characters to take on the master, who is the ruler of this galaxy, as you fight to try to free not only yourself but your comrades from what is called the prison. However, this space is completely under the control of the master. Though there is a silver lining, there is a path to get to the master and free your world from his clutches. However, it won't be so simple. To the dismay of everyone, he has an elite team of guards called the Zodiacs, which is based on, well, the Zodiacs. I know, shocker. Though, these aren't your run-of-the-mill baddies. Each one of them has their own personality that range from nice, cryptic, and even daddy issues? Either way, you will fight each of them, not just finding information about them, but also their relation to each other, the master, and even to your own playable characters. Eventually, you will face off with the master, only to find, to my dismay, that you aren't strong enough and you're just being played with. Even if you beat the master, he locks your ass in a box and one-shots you. <gasps> Please! Have mercy! Sending you back to the beginning, but not all hope is lost. The truth of it is you actually absorbed a part of the master's power, letting you get your own unique strength to grow and cultivate, and that's where the game truly begins. And with that, this is the beginning of the true gameplay. With gameplay, there's a lot to go over, so make sure you get your notepad out. It will be on the test. Got it? good okay so when you start a run you notice you'll have four skills on your left hand side these can be replaced and upgraded through the run either by level or what's called gambits which each of these apply a different kind of effect on your skills either being on hit or on cast skills that give big bonuses to cast these spells you will need necessary mana and if you ain't got the mana you ain't casting them them's the rules you have no mana! luckily you can regain mana by just basic attacking stuff Aside from that, you also have your character's special skill, which you will always have available and it's just on a second based cooldown. No mana required. Aside from that, you will collect health crystals, which you can use to heal yourself. You can hold up to five at a time, but use all of them at once for one big burst. Though if you have the max five, you'll be able to heal yourself basically always back up to full. Aside from this, another main gear you'll collect are auras, which are passives that give you a variety of effects from causing nimbuses to spawn and zap random things around you, to becoming a spell spamming god as you cheese your way through the game. That's how I beat my first run. Though those are the only main gear components, you will collect three different types of items in your run. Crystals, which is essentially gold, which you can use to spend at basic shops. Keys, which can be used to unlock random, honestly, I, I don't even know what to call them. Gates? I, yeah, open those things. What? to get more buffs and upgrade your skills. And there are stars which can be used at your local bar to drink your troubles away. I mean, to get drinks that are permanent stat boosts for that run. Besides that, there are a variety of different rooms you will come across with charming encounters that can give you even more bonuses. I don't want to spoil too much, so you'll have to find those out for yourself. However, there's a total of five areas in each run. At the end of each area, you will fight one of three different Zodiacs to progress forward. However, one of the coolest things is when you defeat a zodiac you can encounter them again in future runs but this time it's not a fight but they will give you a challenge if you best them they will join you becoming your ultimate ability which is super powerful which varies vastly depending on the zodiac you recruit and at the end of your run you will be given tokens based off of how far you've gotten of course you can use these tokens in town to upgrade your abilities or get permanent boosts finally the last thing i will note as you progress you will eventually be given new weapons for each of the main characters completely changing how they feel and play all right 
Get all that? Because it'll be on the test. But assuming you got everything, that's the basic gameplay loop. And I have to say, with everything, it's wonderfully made and executed, so I will be giving it an easy 5 out of 5 for how fun the loop is, and the fact that it kept me going an extra 2 hours on my latest stream says a lot. But with gameplay out of the way, let's get to my favorite part. The visuals. And man, blowing me away is an understatement. Guys, the visuals are beyond amazing. Literally, look at these animations. For both characters and all the bosses, sign me up. These are lovely, and the world, mwah. Literally, I don't know what else to say, so I'm just gonna let Mark take the stage again in this video. Here is my favorite thing ever in the history of forever. Yep, you said it, Mark. Literally, the art and style will live rent-free in my brain. Do I really need to say anything else? The style is amazing. The world is amazing. The designs are amazing, and it's easy enough to follow what's going on on screen. Can be a bit chaotic, but it's nothing not normal for roguelike. Hell, I want to give this section a 6 out of 5, but I guess we'll stick with the simple 5 out of 5. But with visuals out of the way, we could stop staring at some of the, uh backgrounds uh let's move on to audio audio also is wonderful in its own ways the best part being that the music is dynamic as you progress to different areas it shifts and changes based off of if you're in a fight a shop or just exploring and on top of that the sound effects are super nice and satisfying honestly the music feels wonderful there are times where i feel like the music should go a bit harder but i think that's just more of a personal preference it's a more chill style of music and for that, I'll still give it a 5 out of 5. The music still feels amazing and is nice to listen to. With each shift and change in audio, we find ourselves feeling the differences as we progress. And speaking of progression, let's talk about replayability. And wow, does this game have a lot of it. For four different characters, each with their own abilities to unlock, with a whole tree of permanent upgrades to unlock after your first run, each of the characters having three different weapons to play during the game, every area have three different bosses, which you can eventually unlock as your ultimate abilities, achievements, and just a well-presented backstory for every character and enemy. Yeah, it's a lot. So I think it goes without saying that this game has a five out of five for replayability. Also, there's multiplayer too, if you want to play with that. I never got to. I don't have that many friends. <laughs> And I think it's about time to unlock that like and subscribe button. So you should hit those or forever be a pawn in the master's game. But that being said, you might be surprised with the difficulty of this game. The difficulty for this game has a nice middle ground. When I was playing on stream, my chat was a little impressed that it only took me three runs to beat my first run and unlock a whole new part of the game. But given it only took me three runs, I don't think it's very hard, but with the controls defaults being a little weird, it takes a bit of getting used to, and if you aren't paying enough attention, you will easily get hit, hit a lot. So I would say this is a nice middle ground for both casual players and hardcore roguelike players out there. And for that, I'll give it a solid three out of five for difficulty. Now, before making it to the rating, sorry, not so fast. Let's give a quick shout out to who recommended this amazing game. And that would be Spark Soldier 4280. Thank you for the recommendation. It was a great one. And of course, if you want your suggestion showed off in the next viewer's choice, follow these rules and make a comment. Be the most liked one and your suggestion will be shown off in the next viewer's choice. Okay, rating time. After six plus hours of trying to unlock the gun character and realizing that trying to be a run too quickly means I get cheesed out of my win. Damn you. This game really caught me with its visuals and showmanship. On top of this, it just has so much to unlock, it'll keep you going. There's so much charm to this game, and for that reason, I'm gonna give this game a 5 out of 5. It's a beautifully crafted experience that I would happily recommend to anyone. But do I think it's worth your time, money, and likelihood of getting cheesed out of your first couple of runs for plot? Yes. Yes, I do. But I guess more specifically, if you like 2D hack and slash roguelikes like Skull the Hero Slayer, Dead Cells, or even Have a Nice Death, like a nice story on the side of your roguelikes, and slash or just want to play a guy with guns, then I would highly recommend it. The game will be in the description. With that being said, if you want to see another game that has an absolutely gorgeous art style, take a look at Tangle Deep, which is a more traditional roguelike, but with just as beautiful an art style.